Okay, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and moved here to Long Island to take the job here at Suffolk County Community College. Looking back now, I think I, I, I had feelings towards not liking girls, probably back before junior high school. But I never really acted upon it, nor thought of it, and put it in a dark corner space of my life. Um, it wasn't until college when I started to really confront who I was. Uh, I never had a family member, nor any friends or anybody in the neighborhood. Um, but it wasn't, again, until I got older, I started to know and become friends with other gay people. After graduating from high school, I went on to college, and I threw myself into my work. I mean, I, I, just, I just consumed myself with my schoolwork. I became highly involved in campus activities. And looking back, I believe it was me putting these distractions into my life. So I specifically did not have to deal with being gay. Um, it wasn't until my junior year of college, I came out accidentally. I was at a party with a friend, and my friend, a female friend of mine, and my friend was sitting on my lap. We, we all were having a good time, and it was a Friday night we at a friend's apartment. And I leaned over and I kissed her, and she pushed me away, and she said, Oh, get away from me, you're gay. And I said, I know. <laughs> and then and then I and then I said I, I caught myself and I was like what did I just say I wasn't ready to come out I wasn't ready to say anything to anyone and she just looked at me and she said I know and it's okay and then there was a sense of relief her and I were like two peas in a pot we were great friends and uh, we've remained great f friends and I have uh, been in her wedding and everything like that so we stayed in touch and she was just extremely supportive and, and this was really wonderful and I started after that to slowly tell a few people at a time and then eventually all my friends knew. With my family it's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, Dan Savage actually says that parents can sometimes be the biggest bullies believe it or not, um, you know, kicking kids out of the house and stuff like that. Because I came out after college, or during college, um, I never had to really deal with that. Funny story, my mother, shortly after I started telling a few friends, we were at dinner, and we were at a restaurant, and she, sa she asked me, she, she said, do you like girls? <laughs> like ready to spit out my drink, you know? <laughs> and, I, and I completely lied to her and said, of course I do. And she's like, okay, well, I was just wondering, you know, you never bring around anybody or talk about it, any girls. Oh, I'm always busy, mom, you know, that sort of thing. Child does not, you don't want to disappoint your parents, right? You want to, you want to make them happy. And I think there was that, one, I wasn't ready, and two, it was like disappointment or the possible fear of rejection or not being accepted. And I think that's probably what I worried about the most. And then two months later, I told her, and she came around and accepted it. My father, on the other hand, I told him probably, he was probably one of the last people to know, I told him about five years later. After I moved to Long Island, I dropped a letter in the mailbox. I mean, nobody does that anymore, right? So um, I dropped it in the mailbox, and he called me, and really overwhelmingly accepting of it, and without any problems. My, my brother knows, my sister-in-law. Um, their children are young, but ch they don't hide it from their children. They, they know, that even though they may not quite understand what that means. Yep. So overall, I've had really positive experiences with family. Okay, in terms of my friends, this was a bit complicated for me. And this is why I, I held myself back from coming out, because a lot of my, in fact, all of my male friends are very straight very straight. <laughs> um, we all grew up and met each other in the dormitories at college and uh, I have a set of friends from high school and we played sports together and things like that. So I, I was always afraid of their reaction and being uh, defriended or, or being not accepted by them. It turned out as I slowly started to tell people and you know when you tell people something like that they do talk among one another and they started to find out. And some of my friends confronted me about it, not in a hostile way, but they con they confronted me and asked me, and I eventually said yes, you know, and uh, it became very easy, and th and I later learned nobody cared, nobody ever cared, and and now they love it. I've I've been to many of their weddings. I've been in in some of their weddings. They, we always stay in touch. Um, they're always asking me questions. They always ask me about my partner, and so they they've treated me the same and, and I've been very blessed in that regard. 
I, I have to say that I, I work at a phenomenal institution. Um, luckily in higher education there's an acceptance of just everybody, which is, uh, is a part of the reason of why I, I teach and I work at, at a college. My colleagues have been wonderful. They know about my partner. I have a picture of my partner and I on my desk. Um, overall, they've, they've been wonderful and um, they treat me just like anybody else. And as far as the students are concerned, some of the students know um, I, do, I don't necessarily come out in the classroom, but I think they know, and if they were to ask me, I wouldn't deny it, obviously. And, they, and I always bring up issues of LGBTQ issues in the classroom, and the students are always receptive to those issues. And, and it turns out that all my students, like, know, they know somebody who's, who is gay. Uh, they have a family member or a friend, and to them, it's something that they're exposed to. And I think that's a generational thing, too, as we move forward and more people come out, it becomes accepted more, as it should be. In public, um, when my partner Jeff and I, when we go out, we are the only gay couple in a restaurant, typically. Um, and I remember one specific time we were at a grocery store in Connecticut, of all places, which is a pretty liberal state. It was late on a Saturday night, we just went to get ice cream. We wanted to get ice cream. And um, there was a guy that was behind us waiting in line, and he said this off, you know, this comment of, oh, two good-looking guys like you, you know, oh, what, are you, what, what are you guys doing, you know, two good-looking guys like you. And we looked at him, and Jeff said, well, what's your excuse? <laughs> because this guy was, like, older and, and whatever, and he's like, um, he's like, I don't have an excuse, I just hate faggots. And my blood pressure <laughs> was boiling up and I here I am in stop and shop on a Saturday night screaming at this guy I'm saying quite a few expletives to him and I said um, we, did, we weren't bothering you quit bothering us this is unprovoked what, what do you want from us and of course that was the mild version and I caused a big scene and I think the guy was very embarrassed by what he did uh, we later learned he was drunk and I threatened to call the cops on him and all this stuff, and, and, and he completely backed down. And the store manager came over and resolved the problem. That's probably been one of the only few times where something like that's happened. I mean, I'm sure other people have made off you know, jokes or something behind my back, but never have I been, have I felt discriminated. Um, but that was a really bad situation, and it was in public. And there were people all around watching this. My advice to young people would be, if you're dealing with anything in regards to sexuality, luckily today there's so many, a, yes, there's so many resources on the web, but also reach out to someone who you think is gay or is gay friendly or knows something about LGBTQ issues, um, whether they be straight or gay or who you think would be safe. Um, those people tend to be... I. I think can be resources talking about it and talking through those issues. Um, sometimes young people they don't know. You know, they might say, "Oh, well, I'm bi," or "I'm bi curious," and when really they might be gay, or they might legitimately be bisexual too. You know, who knows? But my advice would be, don't be afraid to talk about it, um, and but come out on your own terms too. Sometimes it's there is a risk with family and friends and, and worrying about what other people are going to think. So sometimes you have to be careful. And my advice would be, once when you come out, you are always coming out. Your, your coming out process never stops. Every time you go to a new job, every time you move into a new neighborhood, every time you meet somebody new, you're always coming out. And so just be prepared for that. And as you do it, you get used to it. My partner, Jeff, and I have been together for seven years. We met completely by accident. Uh, I was living here on Long Island for two years, was in the dating scene, and with not much luck, um, I ended up going to a conference with a colleague of mine. This conference was in Boston, it was an academic conference, and we happened to see each other. Uh, and we were looking at each other, <laughs> checking each other out. I ended up seeing him accidentally the next day at a panel, and we start talking, and the rest is history. And uh, he could have been from all the way across the United States, but he happened to be living in Connecticut. And so, although we are currently in that same long-distance Connecticut, Long Island uh, uh, relationship, it's not a big deal. We manage it well. I see him on weekends, and I see him during extended periods of time when I have time off with school or in the summers or whatnot. 
Um, so it's been overwhelmingly positive. It's been a great relationship. Yes, it does get better. Marriage equality. I think we are on the brink pretty soon of um, having what I think would be federal mandated equal marriage laws in this country. They're way overdue, number one. They're unconstitutional. And also, it's more accepting now. It's much more accepting. I mean, we used to live in a country where blacks and whites could not marry. If you were, if you were of one race and your partner was of another race, you couldn't marry. And that, that just sounds ridiculous. And so now, what they're finding with a lot of these gay marriage laws in New York and, and uh, Connecticut and Vermont and some of these other places, they're finding that the sky has not fallen. Um, people are not uh, dying. <laughs> the world's not coming to an end. Everybody's getting along just fine. And we're moving along just fine. So I think it's way overdue and it's only a matter of time before we get to that point. And, um, and I think the tide is turning and the public opinion is turning where the United, citizens of the United States are starting to understand that, hey, uh, people a part of the LGBTQ community deserve these equal rights because a lot of people know somebody who is a part of the uh, LGBTQ uh, movement. And I think that once when they know somebody and they become friends with somebody, that will ultimately um, make, build even more acceptance around the country.